Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. An everyday DVM or VOM, volt ohm meter, cannot measure low resistances accurately. Yet there are a lot of occasions where we need to know the value of a low value resistor, like a current sense resistor or a shunt resistor. So how can we measure these values? In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this using standard shop meters. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. I do try hard to respond to every single comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's understand what we're doing and why. The standard DVM or volt ohm meter makes its resistance measurement using two leads. And this is okay for higher value resistors, but it lacks the ability to measure lower values of resistance because of the limitations of this design. Now what we're going to be talking about today is called the Kelvin connection. No, not Calvin, Kelvin. This is a four terminal connection to a resistor. This method is named after William Thompson, Lord Kelvin. He invented the Kelvin bridge in 1861. It is a much more accurate method of measuring any resistance value, but it is aimed mostly at measuring low values like what we're going to be doing today. The very foundation of this method lays in Ohm's law. When you put a current through a resistor, there will be a voltage drop across the resistor. And we can calculate the resistance using Ohm's law. That resistance is equal to the voltage drop across the resistor divided by the current through the resistor. The challenge we have is in measuring the right voltage drop. Every conductor has resistance associated with it. So where we make our connections makes the difference in what we measure, especially with very low value resistors. The often advertised standard Kelvin connection applies the current on the outside connection and the voltage is measured on the resistor terminals itself on the inside. Now here's a picture of a current sense resistor that is set up overtly this way. You can see the very heavy connections for the current. You can also see the much smaller screw connections for the voltage measurement. The circuitry that is interested in the voltage drop across the resistor connects to these smaller screws. While this is a conventional Kelvin connection, it isn't always quite so obvious what we're doing. Here's a case in point. The big bolts on the top are the current connections and the small screws on the side are the voltage connections. They're all on the same big block of metal. Now while we are making the same kind of connection, the separation between the current and the voltage connections are not quite so obvious. Lastly, we have resistors like these. There are no overt four terminal connections of any kind. And this is where we have to use our understanding of the needed Kelvin connections to make sure we connect it up properly for our measurement. The object is to measure the voltage drop across the resistor in question itself, where the resistance value really matters. We do not want to include whatever voltage drop there might be in the leads and the like. Wherever we measure the voltage drop, those are the two points at which we're also measuring the resistance. Now that we understand all of this, let's go through the example measurement. In order to perform this measurement, we're going to need some things. We're going to need a DC power supply that is capable of providing enough current for the measurement. We need to produce enough current so that we can get a measurable amount of voltage drop across our resistor. We're also going to need a DC ammeter, which is capable of measuring the current through our measurement system. We'll need a DC millivolt meter 
capable of measuring the voltage across our resistor down into potentially the low single digit millivolt range. And then we're going to need some kind of load resistor, which is capable of syncing the entire current for an extended period of time. Now, with any good measurement, we have to properly plan it out. If you have never done this before, there are a few things that we need to think about. First, what current are we going to be using in our measurement? This begins with the limitations of the resistor that's supposed to be measured. Suppose that we were trying to measure this 10 milliohm 50 watt resistor. This means that we do not want it to dissipate more than one quarter of its rated power during the measurement process. This is 12.5 watts. And now you may wonder why. Well, think about it. As we put current through the resistor, the resistor is going to heat up. And as the resistor heats up, it will change value with temperature. We will find ourselves chasing numbers as they change by the moment. So let's do the calculation for my test subject. We already know that power is equal to the square of the current times the resistance. So we have 12.5 watts is equal to the square of the current, which we don't know yet, times the resistance 0 0.01 ohms. So we do a little mathematical magic. We have current is equal to 12.5 watts divided by 0 0.01 ohms. Take the square root of that whole thing, and we come up with a current limit of 35.4 amps. Well, I'm not going to go anywhere near that level. In my case, my power supply is only rated to 5 amps, but I'd like not to even push this, so I think I'm going to use 3 amps. I plan on using my Fluke 175 to measure the current, which is accurate to 1.17% on its 10 amp range. It will also give me 1 milliamp resolution. The next thing that we have to consider is what sort of voltage drop are we going to have to measure. So we have a 10 milliohm resistor and 3 amps passing through it. Well, we know that voltage is equal to the current times the resistance, so we have 3 amps times 0 0.01 ohms gives us 0 0.03 volts or 30 millivolts. I have decided to use my 10 dBm to measure the voltage drop according to its specifications. It will work just fine for this. It will give me 0.1 millivolt resolution with a 1.15% accuracy. Now you might wonder why I keep talking about the accuracy of my measurement devices. It is because the accuracy of the test equipment we use to make the measurement affects the accuracy of the measurement that we make. The degree of uncertainty is additive. In this case, if my 10 dBm is off by its maximum tolerance of 1.15% for our 30 millivolt measurement. And at the same time, our fluke is off by its maximum of 1.17% in our measurement of 3 amps. That means that the total uncertainty for this measurement of this resistor is going to be plus or minus 2.32%. Now, it's probably going to be closer than that, but this is all we can guarantee if our equipment is working properly. Now we have to talk about the last piece of the pie, the load resistor. We begin by calculating the required load resistor value. Now, the first step in calculating the load resistor's value is setting a voltage that we're going to be using for our measurement. For the sake of this demonstration, uh, I'm going to pick a number out of the air and I think I'm going to shoot for 10 volts. Now we already determined that we want to use 3 amps for the measurement. So our load resistor value, well, we know that the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. I just decided on 10 volts. We already decided on 3 amps. So the resistor value is 3.333333 ohms. Now, 
Precision is not required for this. This gives us a ballpark value to shoot for. The accuracy of the measurement does not depend on the precision of this value. Now we have to think about how much heating we will get in our load resistor due to the current we put through it. And you say, well, why? Well, again, just like the unit under test, as your load resistor heats from the current, its value is going to change. The current's going to change. And we'll be chasing our measurement again. So we want a degree of stability in this whole thing. Now, resistors have two important readings to look for. We have maximum current, which is usually for resistors that you can vary the value of. Or power dissipation, which is usually just with fixed resistors. The first one we rarely think about, and the second one is more common. Generally speaking, a resistor is going to have either one or the other, but not both. Now, if you have a resistor which sports a maximum current specification, make sure that your load resistor's maximum current reading is at least 30% above the current you plan on putting through it. Now, in, in my case, I'm using a big old lab resistor that has a rated maximum of 5 amps. Now, we're planning on using 3 amps, plus 30%, that's 3.9 amps, I'm good to go on that one. But if your resistor has a power dissipation rating, we need to be sure that the actual power dissipation is no more than half of the load resistor's rated dissipation. With our example, we know that we want to test at about 10 volts. We want to be pushing about 3 amps. And so what's the actual power dissipation? Well, we know power is equal to voltage times current. That's 10 volts times 3 amps. That's 30 watts will actually be dissipating in the resistor, which means that our power dissipation on our load resistor needs to be at least 60 watts. So you say, well, wow, that's too much. I don't have anything that big. Well, you can reduce your required dissipation by using a lower test voltage which means that your resistance is going to be smaller and your power dissipation is going to go down. Now, we have it all completely defined. Let's put this stuff together. Ooh, we're finally at the bench. Well, you will notice that the resistor that I'm looking to characterize here does not have Kelvin connections. It just has two stubs hanging out of the ends. I'm interested in measuring the resistance of this resistor at these connection points. So, this is how I set mine up. I set, soldered a wire onto it on both ends. And now I have current connection over here and voltage connection over here. So, before we begin, be sure to turn the output voltage all the way down on your power supply. And if you have current limiting, you might have to turn that up to make sure that it will provide the current that you need. If your load resistor is of the variable variety like mine is, then you need to set that resistance so that it agrees with what your planning was. Make sure that the ammeter and the voltmeter are on the right scales. So here I have my voltmeter on the 200 millivolt scale, and I have my ammeter set to measure amps. Make sure, oh, see it says AC here. So it's all ready to go. Amperes. Now we can connect everything up. All right, so let's talk about how we are connected here. We go from the positive of the power supply down to our ammeter positive. From the ammeter negative, we go to our load resistor. From the other side of our load resistor, we come around to the current connection on our resistor that we're testing. And the other side of the current connection, we're all going back to the power supply. Now, on the 
voltage connection side of our unit that we're testing. We go from here on the positive side, which is the one closest to the load resistor. We're going up to the positive input on our DVM. And the negative input on our DVM is coming around to the opposite side of our unit to be tested. Now we are all ready to go to actually do the test. All right, now that we're all connected, we're going to turn on our power supply and start the test. We want to make sure that the voltage is all the way down. And in my case, because this has a current limiting feature, I'm turning this all the way up to make sure that I get the current I need. So we turn it on and we're going to increase the voltage on the power supply while watching the voltage in the power supply as well as the current through our test system to make sure that we're not exceeding either 10 volts here or 3 amps in our system. So now we're going to be watching the both of them as we increase. Our goal is 10 volts or 3 amps-ish. And so here I am up, two and a half amps, and we've hit just about 10 volts. So at this point, we're going to write down two values. The current value, which is 3.088, and the 30.4 millivolts. And from these two values, we can calculate the resistance of our resistor. We've completed our measurement on the bench. We've got our values. We discovered the current was 3.088 amps and we had a voltage drop across our resistor of 0 0.0304 volts or 30.4 millivolts. We know that resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. So we take our voltage 0.0304 volts we divide it by our current 3.088 amps and we get 0.009845 ohms or 9.845 milliohms and this is a 10 milliohm resistor so that is pretty doggone good but remember we're still only an accuracy of 2.32%. So we could be somewhere around this value because our measurement instruments limit our accuracy to plus or minus 2.32%. So there you go, how to measure any resistor, but especially the low value resistors using the Kelvin or four wire connection. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots!